Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And the first thing is I have to engage in some shameless self-promotion. I guess I'm allowed since this is my news channel, right? Food Over Medicine is doing really well, keeps going up in the rankings. There's some great reviews posted on Amazon. If you feel inspired, please write a review. Only if it's a good one. I'm just kidding. Actually, I hope you do write a good review of Food Over Medicine posted on Amazon. So anyway, pick up your copy today. And um, we're actually going to do a conf couple conference calls on Food Over Medicine in July. So watch the newsletter for announcements about that. Um, and while we're on the subject of workshops and that kind of thing, we have a great workshop this Thursday, June 27th at 9 p.m. Gardening Skills with Jill Phillips. She is a master gardener, has been a member of the Wellness Forum forever, and is going to talk about things like water and fertilizer. I mean, you guys probably know you can't just stick seeds in the ground and expect wonderful things to happen. There is an art to this. And it's not too late, by the way, to start planting uh, some things, even if, um, even if you didn't plant a garden early on. So anyway, if you're interested in that, call our office and get the call-in number. And you can learn about gardening, both uh, indoor and outdoor, by the way. She's going to talk about both. So uh, you may choose to have an indoor garden as well. All right, so I've chosen a couple things to talk about today, and the first one has to do with this recurring issue of vitamin D uh, supplementation, which I don't think I go a day in this office without answering at least one and sometimes more emails um, about this issue, and it comes up at almost any lecture or Q&A that I do publicly. And so this has to do with vitamin D supplementation during pregnancy. And as it turns out, it doesn't seem to help much, which isn't surprising. I haven't found much research to support the use of vitamin D. But uh, this particular study included 3,960 pregnant women who were evaluated for vitamin D status. And then their children were later evaluated when they were nine years and 11 months old for bone health and bone mineral concentration. And the researchers concluded that there was no connection between vitamin D levels during pregnancy and these kids' bone health later in life. Um, the researchers reported that the mom's vitamin D levels were lowest during the first trimester. They got higher during the term of the pregnancy. They were higher in the summer, lower in the winter, and non-white moms and moms who smoked had lower vitamin D levels overall. But none of this had any relationship to these kids' bone health when they were almost 10 years old. Um, vitamin D has been added to the list of supplements that pregnant women are advised to take along with folic acid and vitamin, uh, multivitamins and that sort of thing. And part of the rationale is women are being told by their very learned ob that this supplementation is necessary in order to ensure good bone health for their children. Um, and that uh, in, in order to achieve the right levels of vitamin D, supplementation is really required. Well, I have a lot of problems with the way that vitamin D recommendations are being made right now. First, I think ideal levels are being exaggerated by health professionals who now think they've found the next magic bullet. Vitamin D levels are, uh, when they're too low, are responsible for almost all disease conditions, and the way you remedy almost anything is to supplement with vitamin D. It's a ridiculously simplistic approach to health, and we've never found a magic bullet yet. I don't think vitamin D is going to be the one. Um, and the research that we rely on to make associations between vitamin D and disease do not show cause and effect relationships and there is a big difference. I've spoken about this a lot and you can read many of my articles on this topic in the Health Brace Online Library. And uh, there's no consideration for the side effects that are inherent in prescribing vitamin D. And I'm seeing an increasing number of people who are coming into our center suffering from the side effects of taking large amounts of vitamin D over a, a long period of time. So I'm going to continue to really caution people about vitamin D supplements and I think the pills can be useful for some populations. I mean, you know, there's no question probably that people living in nursing homes who haven't seen the sunlight for the last 20 years might benefit, but this just does not translate to a general recommendation for the entire population. Now, it's timely for us to be talking about this because a lot of you that watch this live in North America, and it's summertime, so it's time to get outside and produce vitamin D in the way that nature specifically designed humans to do so, which is in response to sun exposure. So, um, just say no to the supplements, get yourself outside, don't burn, I mean, usual caution, sun burning is bad, don't uh, lay in the sun for hours at a time, but you know, being outside till your skin turns color is a good idea, and this is the season to do it. Your body will store the vitamin D for use in the winter. All right, now, 
Um, while we're on the subject of pregnancy, I'm going to continue this theme here. Let's talk about protein. Concerns about getting enough protein just never seem to go away. It's another question that comes up all the time. And uh, the evidence really is not that protein deficiency is our problem. The evidence is that protein excess, along with excess everything else, calories, fat, etc., is the problem. Americans take in too much protein. This starts in infancy, actually. And a new study shows that this protein excess starting in infancy may be one of the contributing factors to childhood obesity. So the study looked at the effects of lower calorie and lower protein formulas on the growth of infants whose moms were overweight during pregnancy and at the time of delivery. Now the reason why this particular group um, is good to study is that overweight women or obese women tend to deliver higher birth weight babies who experience more rapid growth in infancy and have an increased risk of becoming overweight um, later in childhood. Breastfeeding provides many advantages to infants, including lower protein, which um, also reduces the risk of becoming overweight. Cow's milk, which is used in formulas, is so high in protein that it has to be diluted in order to protect the kidneys of the infants who are consuming it, but the resulting product is still higher in protein than um, breast milk is. Now back to the study, it was conducted by researchers from of all places, the Nestle Nutrition Institute, and healthy infants whose moms had a pre-pregnancy BMI of over 25 um, were included in the study, and these mothers agreed to either exclusively formula feed or breastfeed. The breastfeeding group was used as a control. Now those who were giving their children formula were randomized to either get an experimental formula that had 1.65 grams of protein per 100 calories and 628 calories per liter. This formula was also supplemented with probiotics. The other standard formula had higher protein content, 2.63 grams of protein per 100 calories, 656 calories, higher in calories, no probiotics. The weight gain and body mass index were significantly lower and the group of infants fed the experimental formula when they were measured at all intervals between 3 and 12 months. And the researchers concluded that although maternal obesity is associated with higher birth weight, increased propensity to gain weight, etc., uh, breast milk provided protection and um, and the lower protein formula provided protection as well. Now, I find this study interesting for some re for several reasons. And the first one is it recognizes the superior superiority of breast milk over formula, which is an incredible acknowledgement coming from a company that makes formula. So if a company that makes formula will actually acknowledge you're better off breastfeeding your baby, I think that really says something. But it also emphasizes how misguided this ridiculous concern over, oh my gosh, am I going to get enough protein? Will my infant get enough protein? How misguided this whole thing really is. And it demonstrates the power of nutrition to overcome predisposition. In this case, an infant's tendency to put on weight quickly as a result of being born to an obese mother. So anyway, a couple of important points for pregnant women. Um, first of all, really be cautious about supplementation. I think our uh, advice, uh, standard advice on that is a little misguided. And the second thing, breastfeeding is best. Even the companies that make formula will tell you that. Uh, but keeping your baby on a lower protein diet will be pre protective if you do have to, for some reason, formula feed. Well, that's all for now. Have a great day, and I'll be back to you on Thursday. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would benefit from watching it.